There are a couple of points that are important for more advanced students thinking about embouchure and articulation and they are they really interact with each other. The first one to do with embouchure is the fact that the embouchure really changes on the bassoon from almost from note to note subtly but the place that it really changes is from the low range up to the high range. In the low range, which a lot of students have problems with, they really need to be quite loose. The embouchure is very loose. I'm pushing from the corners, but I'm not using much pressure at all. If I play that same note with the same embouchure, an octave higher, you hear how flat it is. So I have to do two things. I have to put a little more effort into the corners, and I have to move the air faster. Now, you can use an analogy, which probably isn't entirely scientifically correct, but I think it works really well. And that is that just like the frequency of a note doubles when you go up the octave, so a low B flat is only vibrating at half the speed of the B-flat an octave higher, the air similarly has to move twice as fast when you get to that next octave up to produce the same kind of pitch. And the amateur has to compensate. So if I continue and I have this middle B-flat, and I use the same embouchure and air sitting on the one the octave higher, it's quite flat, you see. When I play it in tune, it's a combination of faster air and a little more support from the corners. If you think of the embouchure as that drawstring bag, as you go higher on the bassoon, you have to pull the drawstring a little bit tighter so that the embouchure becomes a little more round and a little more supportive for the reed. The higher you go, the tighter the embouchure has to be. Now, thinking about articulation in relation to embouchure and air, we've talked about how to start a note, but almost more difficult on the bassoon is how to end a note. If I just end a note without doing anything, it has a really sharp drop off. So what we have to do is use a combination of air and embouchure to make that very last release really, really even so that the pitch and the tone stay the same as the rest of the note. The way you do this is to think of the air moving a little more slowly at the release, but you're going to support a little more and you're going to bring the corners in. So. As I make a decrescendo, I think of slower air. I'm kind of backing off, but I'm compensating with the corners of my mouth and with my support. When you have a student who's trying to play short notes, often they'll have a hard time releasing the end of that note. So I like to try and get them to first play a long note with a nice diminuendo and then think of just making very small diminuendi at the end of every short note. That gets them used to the feeling of support that's required at the end. Then it's almost like little diminuendos at the end of every note. A lot of worry has been expended about whether we should end notes with our tongue or with our air. And in practice on the bassoon, you do both. There's a kind of characteristic bassoon articulation where you use your tongue. We're good at that crisp kind of articulation. But at first, I think it's good to get them used to using their air to end the note. They don't sound too different. The second one's a little bit lighter, a little more buoyant. But if you get them used to using their air, at number one, it reinforces what they have to do at the end of a long note, and they can practice both skills at the same time. Short diminuendos at the end of short notes and at the end of long notes. It also helps to keep them from getting into the habit of stopping notes 
with their tongue. After they've mastered a nice short note ended with the air, then they can move on to using their tongue. And when they use their tongue, I'm still doing the same thing with my air. I'm just using the tongue to make a slightly crisper end to the note.